Hello. Today we are going to talk about sex. It is time to talk about this topic without any taboos. My name is Dr. Sayas. I am an internal medicine doctor and also I am a neurologist specialized in movement disorders. Let's talk about three important facts. Number one, sexual dysfunction is very common in the general population, but it is worse when you get older and even more if you have Parkinson's disease. It's one of the common non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. Remember that non-motor symptoms can be even worse than having the motor symptoms. When I say the motor symptoms, I mean the slow movement, the stiffness, the resting tremor, the walking problem. And there are many, many, many factors uh, affecting your sexual performance. Uh, for example, having vascular issues. I mean, not having enough blood flow to the area. That might affect your, your performance. Um, other, other factors are endocrine, hormonal problems, medication side effects, that's a common one, being off, which means uh, medication, the levodopa, uh, the Parkinson medication is out of your system, out of your brain. Fatigue is a, is a big one. And most important, importantly, your emotional state. Remember, your body follow your state of mind. Fact number two. There are different types of sexual issues in males with Parkinson's disease. The first one, decreased libido. What is that? What is the libido? Libido is the desire to have sex. That's the first one. Number two, problem with the ejaculation. So you cannot have a you cannot have orgasm anymore. That's another a big one too. And number three, lack of not able to have an erection. Okay, that's a number three. Now, you can have actually the opposite, which is, we call that hyper, hypersexuality, uh, which, which might be related with an impulse control disorder, causing you to have uh, excessive sexual thoughts, which might lead with other problems. And usually this is related with medications that we use to treat your Parkinson, especially the dopamine agonist. Watch my video about side effect of dopamine agonist. The link is in the description below this video. Fact number three, sexual dysfunction in Parkinson's disease is a treatable condition. However, the first step is to tell your doctor, your provider about this problem. Otherwise, there's no way to help you. Uh, I understand you might feel very uncomfortable talking about these issues, uh, especially when you come to the office with your family. I will give you some techniques. Usually a movement disorder doctor will take you out usually uh, uh, in the hallway to walk. So this is the time to tell your doctor I have a question about, about sex. And, uh, and if you have the chance to talk at that particular moment, good for you. If not, your doctor will find out the way, okay? But that's, that's a technique that many of my patients actually use. Um, but remember, it's already 2023. So you need to start feeling comfortable talking about these issues, okay? This is your help. This is important for you. Don't think that this is a stupid question because it is not. This is very important, okay? We need to start talking about these issues without any taboos, okay? Um, and don't worry about uh, medical terms. Use your own words. Be clear, especially with me. Just be yourself. Now let's talk about the management, the management of sexual dysfunction in the setting of Parkinson's disease. But again, that might, this might apply to almost everybody. So now, if you are recently diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, just wait, give a chance for the medication to, uh, to do the trick, okay? Give a chance to the medication. When I say the medication, I mean the dopaminergic agent. So usually the, the provider, your provider will start uh, cinemet or carbidopa, levodopa. Uh, that might be enough to improve your sexual problem, okay? So give a chance. 
and let's see what happened. Now, <clears throat> make sure that you are on before this sexual activity. I mean that take your carvidopa, livodopa, your, your Parkinson medication, 30 minutes, one hour, um, actually one hour before your sexual activity. In the same way that you take your medication one hour before playing golf in the same way, okay? Now, let's talk about steps. After that, after giving a chance to your medication uh, to do something, also, or at the same time, you can check your medication list because there are some medications that might actually cause sexual dysfunction. There are many, but this is the most common one. Uh, why? Because we use a lot of antidepressant, a lot of anti-anxiety medication that might cause sexual issues. Uh, for example, the SSRIs. When I say SSRIs, I mean the sertraline, which is Soloff, the Excitalopran, which is Lexapro, uh, but there are many other like Prozac, uh, and there are many others. I, I am mentioning here uh, sertraline and Excitalopran, not because they are the most common cause, it's because it's the one that we use the most because the good side effect profile of these two medications. Okay, now, but they are associated with uh, sexual dysfunction. So you need to know about, about these things, about these uh, side effects. The other type of medication similar to SSRIs is SNRIs. Uh, for example, Benlafaxine, which is symbol, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Effexor, might cause these problems as well. Also, uh, Cymbalta, Dulocetine, Cymbalta, dulocetine also might cause these issues as well. Now, if you ask me which antidepressants are less likely to cause sexual dysfunction, sexual problems, are this one, this four here that we have, that you see here, okay? The first two are, are more commonly used uh, than these two because uh, these two might be more pricey, right? So, and I like a lot of mirtazapine. That's why you see this I highlight mirtazapine because I use mirtazapine a lot. Uh, why? Because it might have some anti-tremor properties, uh, diff different from the other ones that actually might exacerbate the physiologic tremor. Okay, this is one thing. The other thing is to help you to sleep. Uh, is a good antidepressant, a good anti-anxiety medication, even though that is not approved by FDA for anxiety, but we use it for anxiety uh, sometimes. And um, also increase your appetite. Okay, and people tolerate the medication pretty well. So I, I use mirtazapine uh, frequently. And again, um, is less. They are less likely to cause uh, sexual dysfunction. Okay, so this is the option that you have. Now there are other medications that might cause sexual problem. For example, beta blockers uh, that we use a lot to treat action tremor. Like when you treat essential tremor, you use beta blockers. Um, specifically, propanol it might cause sexual dysfunction in some patients, in some patients. Now, I want to tell you that there is a study performed, um, uh, actually from Italy, showing that just thinking about the possibility of having sexual dysfunction is with, 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 with the beta blockers, with atenolol, that's what they use in this trial, is enough to cause uh, sexual dysfunction. No. Okay. So, step number two. So second step, like everything, lifestyle modification. You need to change the way that you do things. Okay. To improve. Stop smoking. Stop drinking alcohol. Start doing exercises. And when I say stop do doing exercises, you need to be consistent. It's not just doing one week of exercises and then the next week not do anything. It doesn't work like that. I actually have a video about exercises in the setting of Parkinson's disease. The description is below this video, okay? Um, so, and you need to do significant amount of exercises, okay? It's just moderate to high intensity to have some benefits. 
but remember you also have to start with something and uh, and even if 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 just if it's only five minutes of doing something of doing or walking it's okay but you need to progress okay anyway weight loss and healthy diet very important if you have diabetes treat your diabetes this is a very important because diabetes by itself will cause erectile dysfunction okay and many other problems sleep hygiene if you don't sleep well things are not going to work well if you are snoring and you have excessive daytime sleepiness you need to have a sleep study you need to rule out sleep apnea very important sleep apnea is highly associated with many issues that might affect your health significantly for example stroke heart attacks depression memory issues and indirectly uh, um, also sexual dysfunction so you need to make sure that you don't have a sleep apnea and most importantly find a way to improve your mental health this is very important what can we do to increase the libido when i say the libido i mean the, the sexual desire well remember that when you get older the level of testosterone normally decrease this is going to happen and actually um after 60 years old at least 25 percent of the males will have low levels of testosterone but this is keep going worse uh, so it makes sense that if you have low level testosterone you replace with testosterone right and actually we have data uh, in the setting of parkinson disease uh, using testosterone replacement therapy a gel uh, transdermal in the setting of Parkinson's disease improving the uh, sexual function and uh, this is from 2002 okay so it might improve also the effect of the of the medication that we use to treat er erectile dysfunction now what about if we have erectile dysfunction and um and you are asking about medication what medication we can use well the most common medication prescribed is the viagra or viagra uh, uh sildefanil sildefanil this one that we see we see here which is uh, uh commonly known as the blue pill and remember you need to take this medication with empty stomach okay to improve the absorption one hour before the sexual activity we have evidence we have data for that okay there are many articles about that you start always with a low dose and then you can optimize if needed okay now <clears throat> um very important if you are taking nit nit nitrate uh, you cannot take nitrate with this type of medications at the same time you cannot otherwise your blood pressure will drop okay you cannot take this medication you need to wait and uh, for example if you are taking uh, uh, nitrates you need to wait at least 12 hours to take this medication the, this one particular this one okay there are other medications that they are long acting that you might need to wait even 48 hours so you need to know what you're doing so um be careful with that because you might die with this uh, so remember don't take this medication at the same time if you are taking nitrate so nitrate is the medication that we use for chest pain right so and and uh, you have to be careful and also if your blood pressure run low you have to be careful because this medication is a vasodilator so technically will drop the blood pressure okay so you have to be careful with that the most common side effects are number one headaches because they are vasodilator and also flushing flushing the sensation of feeling hot and red that might happen with this medication now another medication that you might try and if you are lucky enough to get this up, approved for uh for um sudden off uh, phenomenon 
then use this one, uh, Kinmobi. Kinmobi is recently uh, is a, is recently approved by FDA here in US uh, in 2020, and tend to be pretty effective at working 30 minutes. Um, uh, when I say working 30 minutes in terms of uh, um, the off time, because it's approved for off, sudden off uh, phenomenon, but it might actually help with the uh, with the erectile dysfunction. Okay, we have data, all data uh, showing that sublingual apomorphine might help with that and actually help with that. Now, if nothing is working, you need to see a urologist, urologist, okay? The urologists are doctors, they are physicians specialized in this problem. They can recommend more invasive uh, procedures, uh, including uh, self-injection of prostaglandin. Sounds uh, scary, but tend to be effective as well. Also surgical procedure is the last option, but it's an option too. Some people use uh, what we call the vacuum assisted erection devices that uh, tend to be apparently safe. So that's another option that you have, but you need the help of the urologist, okay? Now, last one, what we can do with the anorgasmia or delay ejaculation. So you cannot have a ejaculation or, or a delay, what we can do. Well, unfortunately, we don't have any medication approved yet for that particular problem. So uh, the most important treatment is psychotherapy. So training your brain for this, okay? The problem is getting a good uh, therapist. That's the problem. One of the things that you can do with the help of your doctor is to identify if there is any medication that might be causing this. Uh, especially SSRIs. For example, if you are taking Soloff, sertraline, Soloff, sertraline might actually cause that. And sometimes patients respond just decreasing the doses. So you need to know that. Also, benlafaxin, which is part of the SNRIs family, might cause that too. Uh, amitriptyline, um, Dosepin that sometimes uh, we use in patients with Parkinson. Uh, there are three cyclic antidepressants. Also, those medications might cause this problem as well. And there is some evidence, all evidence <clears throat> for 1997 that you might try amantadine. It might help. And amantadine is a medication approved by FDA to treat Parkinson's disease, uh, especially if you have uh, dyskinesia, which means the dancing type like of movement. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon.